Hello, my name is Betsy, and I'm a singing teacher at Take Lessons. If you've ever wanted to learn how to project your voice, in this lesson, we'll go over a few tips that will help you sing louder on stage without your voice cracking. We'll also cover some helpful vocal projection exercises that you can start using today. So stay tuned, and don't forget to click on the link in the description box to try our free online singing classes. As we talk about how to sing louder and how to project your voice, the biggest thing we're gonna be talking about is resonance. In order to achieve resonance, which is basically the intensity or the timbre of the sound as it's being pushed through your air-filled cavities and kind of exiting your body, we're gonna talk a lot about breath control. So when you were talking resonance, which is the most important thing if a singer in classical world, because they're not amplified at all, thinks about constantly is resonation. It's not as important for like pop singers to think about because they sing into a microphone and they can have any quality of voice or timbre so for a, a singer, we're going to talk about mostly your diaphragm. So uh, any vocal coach that you're working with is going to be talking about your air column and they're going to be talking about your diaphragm. The diaphragm is a tiny little muscle that goes right under your rib cage. It basically controls your airflow. So there are two things that can stop your air, three things actually, your mouth. I could close my mouth and hold my breath. I can also keep my mouth open and hold my breath. Two things can do that. One is your, your vocal cords. If you say something like clean air versus clean air, do you hear the difference? Clean air, that little glottal stop on the A, that's my vocal cords pinching shut and that's gonna stop my airflow. That's gonna be used in diction a lot. You can start a clean vowel sound in the beginning of a phrase using a little vocal or a little glottal stop, which is totally appropriate. However, you don't wanna control your airflow using your vocal cords as you sing. If you do that, it's just too much for those little guys to handle. You have to think about them as tiny muscles that are flapping and controlling your pitch. They're controlling some of your airflow a little bit, but for the most part, we really wanna use your diaphragm. So again, breathe in deeply, hold your breath. You can normally feel this right here, this area kind of tug. Um, another good way to see if you're actually getting that tug is to put your hands here and go ha, ha, ha. And from the side, that's ha, ha, ha. You can see my abdominal wall working. If I go ha, 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 that's a great example of not using my diaphragm to control my air. I always tell my students I'm less of a singing or a vocal coach than I am a breathing coach. It's a big deal to con breathe correctly. And we're gonna talk about some exercises in a little bit to get you breathing more correctly and a little bit more comfortably naturally. So the goal with controlling your, your airflow using your diaphragm and your vocal cords both together is to have most of your airflow controlled by your diaphragm so that your voice doesn't have too much tension. If I see any tension in here when I'm singing, I know that it's like I have too much up here. So relax, roll your shoulders back, get that muscular control without being overly bright. So again, we don't want ah, but we don't want ah, and singing too much and too over bright or pinched. We want that la where it's nice and open open and relaxed, my shoulders are down. We'll talk about that in a second too, about breathing correctly. But with the muscular control, we really wanna just focus mostly on this and that tug as I breathe in and have that support coming from my abdominal wall and pushing on that diaphragm. So as we talk about our good steps for breathing, it's important to realize that when you go to a doctor or um, somebody tells you as an amateur singer or not even a singer, just as a lay person to take a deep breath, 90% of the time they're gonna breathe like this. And I want you to keep your eyes on my shoulders. So they're gonna breathe in and your shoulders go up. In singing, that's a telltale sign that you're not using your diaphragm to get all that air in and you really wanna use that abdominal wall. So I talk about my abdominal wall a lot. It's because the diaphragm isn't one of those muscles. I can't be like, flex your diaphragm. It's not a bicep. So it's attached to your abdominal wall on your obliques, which are your side abdomen muscles. When you walk off a stage, if you're not singing correctly, your vocal cords are gonna be busted. And if you are singing correctly, you're gonna feel like you just did a Pilates class because you have to use your diaphragm and tighten that um, abdominal wall so hard that to support that note that high for so long so you're not killing your vocal cords. If you don't, it's gonna be one of the two. Your abs are sore or your voice is sore. And as a singer, you always wanna to choose to use your abdominal wall and your diaphragm to support that kind of note. So to sing correctly and to, to breathe correctly, I should say, put your hands on your stomach and try to breathe in and fill up that abdominal, your, your lung cavity using your abdominal wall just releasing. So it's gonna look like this. And I always say you should have 
whatever you ate for lunch or breakfast, this is your burrito down here. So your lungs are able to push down using that diaphragm. Your guts have to go somewhere, right? So it's not the cutest look, but you want to have this breathe in right here and just, but again, if you wanna look at my shoulders while I do that, my shoulders are dropped. My shoulders don't go up or move at all. This is the only thing moving. So I'll breathe out on a ha, which we're gonna do a lot of ha's on la's when you're learning to breathe correctly. So I'm gonna breathe in and then exhale on a ha. And that goes right back, right? So I'm gonna do it again. This is a great one to just do a couple times in a row, not too much. You don't wanna get light hydrated or anything. So breathe in and out and try to get all that air out. Really feel that stretch. People don't realize your lungs go all the way around your back. So trumpeters, Olympic swimmers, opera singers, they all have to learn to kind of breathe, back breathe, and let those lungs expand into those ribs. So again, it looks like this, and keeping your eyes on my shoulders, it's not gonna move at all. And then out. So keep that very still, again, not, if I was joking with my little voice students, I'm like, show me a bad breath, and they're like, and I'm like, that was terrible, good job, you know? So keep it right here. If you're having a problem aligning your muscles with how you're supposed to be breathing, and like I said, it is counterintuitive. Most people go to the doctor and breathe in right here. Lay on the floor. Most of my students have spent time laying flat on their back in voice lessons on the floor. It's totally fine, it's normal. Standing against a wall would be the next thing, but put a book on your stomach. Try to make that book raise up and down. Put, like get comfortable having your hands here. <sighs> Show me that and back in. I want to breathe in and then tug my abdominal wall back in and give my voice that support. It takes all the pressure off your vocal cords from even having to think about controlling your airflow because I'm doing it right here. Think about it, your lungs as a pickle jar. We don't have a lid on a pickle jar, right? So if I have air in a pickle jar I, and I want to keep the air in, I have to put a lid on. Something is going to do the work for your lungs. It's either going to be your vocal cords, which is too much tension and strain, or it's going to be your diaphragm. So spend a lot of time laying on the ground if you have to, getting comfortable laying in bed before you go to sleep. Work on your breathing. You, it takes nothing. No one knows you're doing it. You're not disturbing anyone in the house. It's zero air. All you're doing is focusing this out and that back in. Keeping these shoulders relaxed, nice and loosey-goosey, no tension here at all. So for my voice students who don't necessarily have a piano, download an app on your phone, on your iPad. Um, they're all free for a piano and it's super easy to vocalize anywhere. So something that's good for projecting is to first warm up your voice just as naturally as you can. So maybe start on middle C if you're a lady, maybe a fifth lower if you're a grown man. Or it could be you know, a full octave lower than middle C if you're a grown man or a bass. So you wanna start out, and I'll just start on middle C because I am a, a natural soprano. So if you start on a la, and just go up the scale. La. If that's too much to hide your break, just do a fifth. And so think do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. So I'm gonna la. Go up a half step. La. La. Now right around here for most girls and women, that's where you're gonna to wanna to switch into that head voice. So breathe in from that diaphragm. And again, you wanna think pushing down in order, pushing down on that diaphragm, I should say, in order to sing up into your head voice. So la, all the way up the scales by half step until you get too high. And la, la, till your voice gets to where it just feels a little bit too strained, stop there, don't go too far. Go back down the scales, all the way back down to middle C. Do it all again and see if you can't get one or two more pitches. And like This is in the way that uh, a runner would never run a half marathon without stretching and warming up, or a full marathon. Vocalization really helps a singer to kind of stretch and relax those muscles, keeping warm. A lot of singers even go so far to wear a scarf all the time. They want that throat to stay warmed up and they want everything to stay nice, and I would say loosey-goosey, but just nice and loose in there and flexible. Nothing has tension. Another good one is to try to sing that scale but just this time just the octave first so go la la up one la by doing that octave and having that direct connection la you have to force your notes to kind of be in the same register 
working on projection and making sure you can sing those both. I cannot sing la in a big belt the way I can sing la. So la, again, is a more appropriate placement. It's a little bit more forward, la. I like to think about it as my Disney princess voice. La is not the same as la. That register can project a lot more. I can get a lot more sound, but again, that's only gonna go so far because your voice switches and is broken into different, um, different areas where placement is important. So go through up and down the scale, do your little fist, la. Work on all the way up. Use solfege to sing. So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Again, the next one. Up by a half step. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And all the way up till you're comfortable, and then all the way back down again. So there's a lot you can do to vocalize and warm up to be able to really stretch your voice and to project it well and to use that resonance that we've been talking about. So we can also as singers use visualization to work on our projection. As a music major in college, if you're a vocal major, you're put into a tiny little room that's maybe, I don't know, six feet by six feet. It has like an upright piano and a mirror and a door and that's it. And you're expected to learn to resonate and to create these beautiful overtones and like, um, learn to project in this tiny room, it's, which is almost impossible because you're filling up a room with no problem, right? Like, but think about a recital hall. Think about where you're auditioning. Think about these bigger places like a church that you're going to have to sing and really open up. So I like to think about looking through the wall and seeing the back of an auditorium or the back of like the civic center or the back of a recital hall. Think about that last seat as you're projecting your voice. Make it bigger in your head. Open everything up and actually practice as if you were in that space. If you just try to fill up your room, yeah, you're going to sound fine and you're going to have overtones for days and resonance in that little tiny room because it's all bouncing off and it gets confusing. Really take yourself out of where you are physically. Think about looking past your wall. Look all the way to the back of that auditorium. Take that deep breath and really practice as, as if you were in that space. It helps a lot to be able to just kind of take yourself out of where you are and in your head fill up a bigger space and work towards it using visualization. One of my favorite vocal exercises to work on resonance is, I call it the ing -ah. I don't think it actually has a real name, but you say the word sing and you notice that sing, what happens? The back of your tongue goes up against your, the, your soft palate. So in, the, in your mouth, you have your hard palate, which is the first like inch or two up where your teeth are. And then the soft palate, which if you yawn, you could feel it actually goes up almost into into like your 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 nasal cavity, your nasal pharynx area. That's where your most beautiful resonation and placement is going to come. So when I um, tell my students to take a breath, a lot of it comes from here, but a lot of it comes from here. We want to open your mouth at least two finger widths wide. So think about like space between your teeth and two. So open your mouth all the way. I call it my pre-yawn when I sing and I, I feel like you get where your soft palate is already going up and it's like it almost might make you yawn. So breathe in with that space already there and open. So in order to realize how to do that it's yeah you can yawn or pre-yawn but doing saying the word sing so if I go sing and then I try to open it into an ah. So at the same time so I'm going to sing and hold that ng and then I'm going to open it up and you can almost hear a little pop in my voice if um, you're in a smaller space. If you're in a big space, you really don't. And you can just kind of feel that whole space open up. I like to visualize again with visualization, but I like to think about something like a tennis ball or a golf ball in the back of my mouth and my throat. And just I'm that open. If you look in a mirror, you should be able to see your tonsils. You should be able to see that little guy, the uvula that hangs down. If I can't see that because it's being blocked by my tongue, I know that I'm not open enough to have really great resonation. So again, to do this one, just pick any pitch, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to sing the word sing, and then I'm going to open it on this without taking a breath or stopping my breath. I'm going to open it to an ah and let it resonate. So you can do this going all the way up and down the scale. So I'll go ing ah, and that projects you forward a little higher. Ing ah, ing ah, 
And it has that kind of like, it puts you right into that place where you're resonating. You have that ing, you have that note placed forward and it's in your mask. That would be the front, like pushed forward in your face, but then you open it up. And again, it's finding that happy medium. You don't want to be too far forward because that's then like there, nobody wants to hear this all day, especially not in opera, maybe in musical theater, some character roles, you could get away with that. But that's not going to fly singing classically. It just doesn't physically work. So, ing and you open that up. ing and that gives you that perfect area where you're open. If you look right down, ah, my throat is, uh, my tongue is down. I can see everything back there. I carry a mirror for my voice students and I make them sing into the mirror. And I'm like, if you can't sing your uvula, ah, if I'm like this, ah, guess what? I can't hear that from two feet away. You need to be open and resonate. And if you're going to project, you have to use your mouth to do it. That's your megaphone. So open that up. Ah, it's going to be a world of a difference to an audience. So some common things to look for when you're learning to project your voice or be louder or work on that mid-tone belt or that mid-range belt or even just straight on belting for some like a Broadway role uh, or pop. One thing that I teach over Skype and over the computer lessons and I don't, I could put my students on mute and I would know that they're doing it wrong. If I see this and that chin goes up, it's very counterintuitive but healthier singing has that chin go down. I don't want to see any tension here. I don't want this controlling my voice at all. You see this tension or this chin go up and I know it's wrong. I, like I said, I could hear nothing and know that you need to fix that. Instead, if you're belting, la, that chin going down opens up that entire air column and now my lungs and all the way up through my trachea and everything is open and bright. This is closed off, has tons of tension, and I know that tone is gonna to be pushed. So even just, like I said before, practicing in front of a mirror, hang a piano in front of your mirror. I know it's ugly and we make faces when we sing and it's not maybe what you wanna stare at, but healthy looks relaxed, healthy has your chin dropped, and you don't necessarily even need to hear something to know that this is going wrong with, with working on projection. The other thing we can talk about is your breath threshold. And that's that moment where the tension and the air going through is at a perfect balance and you're not creating tension, but you're also not letting enough air slip through. If I would liken it to a violin player, they'll just be like all your notes in one bow and oh, I have no bow left. How am I supposed to play the rest of my song? No, you don't wanna to let too much air out, but you also don't want that tension. So that breath threshold is something that you need to be very aware of. Also, when you're practicing and you do want to find that and it is singing into the mask and then lifting that soft palate. Finding that balance is super important for a singer. Once you do re realize that balance and you find where your, your air is at its best, it's important to recognize what your limitations are as a singer. Maybe I'm trying to push my voice into a role where it's not comfortable, it's not in my range and my breath threshold just won't let me do it. So realizing what your limitations are are also really important, especially for young and developing singers. Not everybody can sing Let It Go nine times a day and have like a healthy voice at the end of it. I would maybe not sing, you know, a bunch of opera that your voice is just not big enough for yet. It takes opera singers years to develop into these roles and to be able to sing these beautiful lyrical arias, especially with these high notes. If you're a soprano, if you're a young tenor, you shouldn't probably be pushing these high C's in high school and middle school. It's unrealistic to, to be able to try to think that you should. And at the end of the day, it's just not healthy. There's tons of, um, literature out there for you to sing and to work through and to be comfortable with with a teacher. So know your limitations, find your breath threshold, figure out where you're comfortable singing with your mask and singing with your soft palate and raised up and resonating and see where you're most comfortable projecting and how loud you can get comfortably. So there's a big difference between yelling and projecting. So if you have a director that says like your voice is too little, I need you to be louder, I need you to project. Using your vocal cords to do that work is yelling. We don't ever as actors or as a singer want to use our vocal cords to control our, the volume of our voice. The biggest way to do this again is with a nice ha. So you're gonna breathe in, get that diaphragm and ha. And the next time try to get a little louder, ha. That's not using my vocal cords to project that sound at all. Something that would be would ha ha ha. That's using my vocal cords. That actually wasn't great for me to do. So don't do that. That, I just wanted you to see the difference between a ha, ha, 
that's coming from right here and you can feel that. If you're practicing at home, if you're trying to develop a louder voice or a bigger voice for stage, really honestly keep your hands here. Ha! And seeing that come through, you'll naturally carry more. Same thing for singing. If you're doing something, if you have to do a belting roll, you know, where it's it's like a, a pop song or ah, that's gonna be more from right there, right? Not ah, where it's coming from my vocal cords. Ah is a lot different sounding. It's also easier to control and you're gonna be able to do it a lot longer using your diaphragm to help project that sound rather than your vocal cords to project that sound, which is just like we said, yelling. So when talking about projection, it's really important to know your voice type and where you're the most comfortable and what range you're comfortable resonating and projecting in. So when people think about range and they think about straining their voice, they often use the term breaking. And a lot of people think that they don't have a good vocal range because their voices crack. So if you say like sing up the scale, most people are like, I can't do that because they go, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. And then they get, they get to that certain range where it's like so la ti do if you're starting somewhere around the middle of, a, of, of your range and they don't think they can sing higher. The fact of the matter is that you can sing higher, you just can't sing in every range higher. So it's about knowing where your breaks are, where you need to switch from that chest voice. So if you sing, put your hand here and sing la or a lower note, you're gonna feel that reverberate within your chest and you feel that buzz right here. If I sing a higher note, la, that's not at all gonna make this buzz. It's gonna make these guys buzz because I'm using a different area of negative space within my body to resonate. So knowing where your break is, where I can comfortably sing up from and to into my head voice is really important. So if I sing do, re, mi, fa, so, and then I switch into my head voice, la, ti, do, I'm not gonna crack. If I try to push that lower register up, I'm gonna crack. If anything, you need to think about higher notes pushing down. So think about it as like a, as an elevator system with pulleys. If I push down my diaphragm and I allow this to do all my work for me, this is gonna be able to go up into that head voice and sing those soprano notes and sing that higher pitch, right? And you're not gonna crack at all. Whereas if I'm using this to push up, there's literally nowhere for it to go. You cannot push up and be able to sing through a scale. Now, working with a vocal uh, vocalization coach or a singing teacher is going to help you a lot to learn where your break is and hide the break. So when I sing do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, you don't hear my break at all. Do, do, because I've brought those lower notes up and mixed that a little bit. I'm not singing a full belt on do, same pitch, do. I'm using a different technique to sing it so I don't actually crack and you don't hear that vocal resistance and you're never going to use the word break to, to describe what you heard. Or, or vocal strain. You're singing it safely and you're singing it appropriately to hide that break. Do you have any other tips for how to sing louder without straining? Leave a comment and let us know. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing so you can receive more helpful singing lessons.